It's good to see y'all this morning. We are going to be talking about fundamental basics of the Word of God and faith this morning. So stand with me for the reading of the Word of God, please, this morning. We're going to talk about the uh, God's Word of creation. We're going to look at it in Genesis and in John and once more in Hebrews, okay? So here's what the Bible said. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Over in the book of, uh, of John, John chapter 1, the Gospel of John, beginning with verse number 1. In the beginning, that sound familiar? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And over the book of Hebrews chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Let's pray. Lord, again, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We're so happy that our God is the only true, living, almighty, infinite creator God, that all things exist today because you spoke it and, and willed it and said that it is so, Lord. We pray that you'll help us to get a new and deeper and better understanding upon what the, the word of God means this morning. Fill me now with your spirit to bring this message for you, your honor, and your glory for you and you alone are worthy. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' holy and almighty name again we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And as I've told you before, if you'll decide whether or not you believe that, if you decide that you believe Genesis 1-1, you will have no problem believing everything else the Bible says. If Genesis 1-1 is the truth, that, that means that there is a single Lord God Almighty and that he is capable of speaking into absolutely nothing and creating everything. If God made the dirt under our feet, if God created the sun in the sky, if God created the, the stars in the sky, if God made you from the dust of the earth, if he did all the, if, if God kept his word in Genesis 1, 1 and capable of doing that, then there is absolutely nothing else in the Bible that you should have a hard time accepting as it is. Okay? Either he is almighty God or he's not. Either he tells the truth or he's a liar. Either he exists and does everything he says, or he doesn't exist. And where does that leave us? So in all of your faith and all of your believing, you have to latch on to where God says it all begins in the beginning. That God created the heavens and the earth. Now, he did that. And when you read about how he did it, you find this. You find that God brought all these things into existence by speaking it. He said the word. This is very important for a Christian. For your faith, your faith as a Christian is all wrapped up in what you say. The Bible says that out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And your spoken word has great mighty power. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says you can believe in your heart that, that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. What you say is very, very important. 
and it is inextricably locked in with, with, with what you believe and how your beliefs become real in your life. Now, when God spoke back in the day, Genesis chapter 1, when God said the word, he said, let there be light. And man, there was light. There was a universe filled with light. And out of this universe filled with light, God began to refine what he had made, made the, uh, the, the dry land and the sky and the fish and the birds and the plants. And eventually on the sixth day, he made mankind. And so God began to define and refine what he had originally made because he makes something out of nothing and he makes something out of something because God can just do that, okay? But he did all these things with his spoken word. God said he spoke the word. Now, in the Bible, the word word is very important, especially in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, he, uh, Brother John, the disciple, reaches way back to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning. So, you know, he's He's hooking together right there. He's hooking his wagon to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. That means there's two of them. The Word was God, which means there's one of them. The same one was in the beginning with God. All right? So you got the Father, you got the Son, and the Spirit of God hovering over the, over the face of the water. So you got to try you and God. Now, that's just something you have to accept by faith because you'll never understand it, not even in heaven. God is way too big. He will not fit in any of your boxes. Amen? He's way too big for that. And I like a God. Because if I could understand God, I'd be God too. You'd all be in trouble. Now then, so God said, now stick with me, and this is important. God said, I create things by speaking my word. And then when it comes to the New Testament, then in the beginning was the word. And by, in, chapter, in that chap, same chapter, chapter 1, in verse number 14, John says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's John 1, 14. Now, what you need to understand about the word Word is this. When God says something, and in, in the Gospel of John, it's the word uh, logos, L-O-G-O-S in English, okay? And we'll talk more about that next Sunday. But what you need to understand about, what, about, about the Word of God, here in John, in the beginning was the Word. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. All things that exist, exist because of the living Word of God. And the Word of God means that God takes all that He's thinking and takes all that He's feeling, takes all of His intentions all of his plans and all of his details, and he brings that all together so God speaks from his heart and from his soul and from his mind and from his strength. And all of God goes into what God says. God said, let there be light. And it wasn't just photons flying through a universe. It's also enlightenment and, and the light for our souls and for our spirits and for our salvation. John said it this way. He said, in him was life, and, it, and the life was the light of men. So Jesus is the light, the light of the world. We've heard these things before. It's what he means. That in Genesis 1, God said, let there be light, and there was light in the universe. In John chapter 1, God said, here's my word. He is the light. And so when God, when God came to this earth in the form of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Messiah, he took all that was in his mind, all that he thought and all that he liked and all that he loved. He took all that was in his heart, all that he felt about his son and about our souls, all that he understood and all the plans that he had made for his people from Genesis through Revelation and beyond. He took all of that and that's his expression, his word, when you see the Lord Jesus Christ walking around. It's the same power of God. It's the same heart of God. It's the same reasoning and wisdom and infinite knowledge and understanding and, and power and love and joy and peace and everything that God is and he has for us. All that is what it's expressed in God's word. You with me? Okay. So, <clears throat> If God didn't say it, it cannot exist. 
And stick with me. Everything existed in Genesis chapter 1 because God said it. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament, an atmosphere. Let there be water. Let there be swarms of fish and birds and all these things. So if God didn't say it, it did not exist. You know why there are no purple unicorns? Because God never said, let there be purple unicorns. That we know of. Right? You know why I'm not six feet tall? God says, thou shalt be ten foot, a five foot and ten and a half inches on a good day with your shoes on. You know why we only have one son? Because God didn't say have two sons or moons. Everything God says becomes reality. Tangible physical reality. When Jesus was here, everything he said happened. Right? Right? He said, be healed of your leprosy. What happened? He was healed. He said, we give you eyesight back. What happened? Got his eyesight back. He said, Father, I thank you for these little, this sack lunch. We're going to feed 5,000 families. What happened? They fed 5,000 families. God said to the, to, uh, the corpse of a little 12-year-old girl, little lambkin, it's time to get up. What happened? She got up. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. What happened? Lazarus comes forth. So the connection between John chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 1 are very much intertwined. Because this is the singular, unshakable principle that what God says happens. Everything in existence exists because God said so. Which means on the other side... If God doesn't say it, it cannot exist. You see how that works? Everything is dependent. It's creation and it's maintained existence. Everything depends on if God says it or not. You say, well, preacher, what does that have to do with me? Well, it has everything to do with you. Because this means, dear friend, that whatever God said in his word is absolutely true. And I'll give, you the, I'll give you the whole sermon in eight words. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Here it comes. If God said it, it cannot be otherwise. If God said it, it cannot be otherwise. Because the reason anything exists at all is because God said it. So if he don't say it, it does not exist. Okay? Now let's apply that to ourselves. P people, take their, well, people take the Bible. And by the way, the first recorded words of the devil in the Bible, <laughs> in, in Genesis, the snake said, Has God not said... First words, first cat out of the bag, first words he ever said. We're going to question the truthfulness of the Word of God. Go out and ask the world what they think of the Bible today. You know what the world thinks of the Bible. Oh, it's, uh, it's antiquated. That's just a bunch of myths and, le le and, and legends and, and st stories. That's, that's stories to, to scare the kids into behaving themselves or get power over the adults. This is no, no truth in it. And we all, we know better because we've studied dinosaurs. Who made dinosaurs? Huh? Same one that made all the rest of us. Don't worry about the dinosaurs. I'll read that story about, uh, did Jonah swallow a whale? It was the other way around. Something like that. Oh, that can't, that can't happen. Well, if you believe Genesis 1-1, you don't have any problem thinking that God said, if I made all the billions of fish in the sea, I had no problem making one, preparing one fish, one sea creature 
specially designed to swallow my old prophet. And he was so bitter. Three, three days later, even the God's prepared fish had to spit him out. Got no problem. Got no problem with Lazarus walking back out. Well, he didn't walk because he's bound head and foot. How, how, did he get, how did he get out of the tomb? He was wrapped like a mummy, like a cocoon, head to tail. How did he get out of that tomb? Well, he got out of there because God Almighty spoke the word. And if God says it, it's going to happen. So we floated out of there by the power of God. If, if God didn't say it, it, it cannot exist. Can, can he have stayed in the tomb? No, because God didn't say it. And our world says, well, we came from the, we evolved. Or the aliens planted us. Yeah. Many, many, many different variations of how we came to be. They say, well, we, we're, we find scientific evidence that we interpret to mean this. But part of the problem is that the world is looking for scientific evidence to prove God. Right? We're believers. Our shoes are on the other foot. We look for theological evidence to prove science. We start with the Bible, the Word of God. He's never been proven wrong. For ever since there were people, everybody's been shouting, oh, that's not right, that's not true. And that God, what God said in your old book is not binding to me. And Christians are still here. We're saying, well, yeah, matter of fact, it does. By the way, you need to put your trust in Jesus Christ. You're going to die without God. You're going to go to hell. God does not want that for you. He wants something better. He wants you to forgive you of your sins and give you a good life and take you to heaven on some glorious day to live with him forever. And people say, well, I'm not interested. Because I don't believe that. I don't believe that. So you and I believe what the Bible says. So in, in our faith then, we say, well, what do I believe? And, then, you know, the world says, well, we have our own beliefs about uh, gender identification, about abortion, about uh, Israel, about the list goes on. And I said, hey, it's an election year. Pick your poison, right? Right? Oh, we've got, we've got issues, 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 and more issues. And everybody's got opinions. How many here are sick of opinions? Opinions. I'm going to do you, do you a favor. I'm going to keep my opinion to myself. Amen? I'm going to keep my opinion to the curb because I am not God. He is. And if God didn't say it, it cannot exist. So if God said it, it cannot be otherwise. You, you, it's not going to do you any good to have a different religion. God didn't say that's the way to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So if you're going to go to God as a father, the only way is to be born into the family through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? You see how this works? Now, can you lose your salvation? Can you come unborn? Let's get some low-hanging fruit here. You put your faith and trust in Jesus. God went to all the trouble, sent his son, death, burial, and resurrection to bring you to Christ, got the gospel to you, Forgave you, washed you, made you a child of God. Your spirit was born in the family of God. Can that come undone? Can you come unborn? Can you lose your salvation? No. Why? Because of what God said. Because of what God said. If God said it, it cannot be otherwise. If he said, I have everlasting life, John three sixteen. It cannot be otherwise. I can't have temporary everlasting life. How do I know that? How, look, I've never been to heaven. Have you? Anybody here been to heaven? I know I'm going. Why? Because God said it. If God said it, it cannot be otherwise. So I'm going to go to heaven based on the word of God. Then when God comes along and he says, fear not, like dozens of times. When God says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
And the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When God says, be careful and anxious for nothing, but with prayer and thanksgiving, uh, supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that passes understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. When he says these things, then guess what? It is the ironclad, unshakable truth. And if God said it, it cannot be otherwise. I cannot say, well, I, I, I've got nothing to, I have no choice. I, I have to be afraid because God didn't say that. Or, oh, maybe they're, they're right about this, and maybe the world's wrong, right about that, and I, maybe I'm wrong because I don't understand these things. Well, what does the Bible say? And so, again, we come back to our regular daily Bible reading and Bible study because if you don't know what the Bible says, then you don't know what God says. And you don't know how to put, where to put your faith. Now, our, our struggle with our faith is full of doubts. Jesus said, if you believe in your heart, Without doubt, you move mountains. James said, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. He gives all men liberally. But let him ask, nothing doubting. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that person think he'll receive anything from God. So our problem is our doubt. It was a man came to Jesus. His son was demon-possessed. It was terrible. It was horrible. The disciples tried. They couldn't handle it. So the man turns to Jesus and says, you know, if you can help me, would you please? And Jesus says, if, if I can help you, if I can do anything, all things are possible to him who believes without a doubt. And the honest dad said this, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And let me tell you the secret about doubt. When you believe one thing but you have doubts, here's what you need to know about your doubt. That doubt is an alternative belief. I believe it is, but kind of me believes maybe it isn't. It's an alternate belief. I believe in God, but part of me don't believe in God. I believe I'm saved, but part of me believes maybe I'm not saved. That's what a doubt is. It's a secondary, contradictory different type of a belief. And so your belief tries to take you, your faith in God tries to take you this way. And those doubts, those alternate beliefs, well, what if I get in trouble? What if God's not really there? What if he lets me down? What if that's not true? What if God don't really love me? I don't love myself a lot of times. Why should God? What if, what if the world's right about the aliens or the dinosaurs or evolution? or What, what if they're right about all these things? And, and so that's an alternate belief. And we get crossways in the things that we believe. It's like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed back and forth. It's this way, it's that way. It's this way, this way. And it is exhausting, is it not? Isn't it? To wrestle and struggle with something that you believe is absolutely exhausting when you have doubts. Because about the time I get ready to go one direction, I mean, I got this lined out, I understand it, then here comes this idea, this thought, this doubt, this alt this alternate belief that pulls me in a different direction and now I'm wandering around and nothing gets done. That make sense? So what we do then is we all turn back to the Word of God because the best way to remove doubt is to see what God said. Because if God said it, it cannot be otherwise. It only exists because God says it. If you don't say it, it doesn't exist. Evolution looks good on paper, looks great in a, in a museum. But what God say? He says something completely different. So if God didn't say it, it cannot happen. So I'll go back to the Word of God. So I want to read the Bible. I want to study my Bible. I want to know what God said. Because it's going to strengthen me in my faith. Because you know what we need in this life is the ability to go straight ahead and march forward and not have to worry about all this noise around our, our, in our head. We live in a world that is absolutely filled with distractions all the time. You know? I mean, I got a, I got a mighty fine financial opportunity in the middle of Sunday school hour this morning. On my phone. 
Oh, I need to help. I need to help save the country from the Democrats. Five minutes later, I'll get the same thing. So, oh, well, I got to help save the country from the Republicans. And it's some some hacker over in uh, Kazakhstan or something. He's just trying to get my money, and it's constant. It's constant. I get text messages from my bed. Tell me how I slept. <laughs> Why? I can't watch a video. I can't drive down the road. I can't do anything without seeing an advertisement. The whole world is constantly screaming, screaming, screaming for your attention. And it's driving you nuts. You can't get a, you can't get a minute's peace. Well, actually, you can't. Here's a phenomenal, monumental, life-changing idea. Take a break from all that stuff from time to time. And just sit and be quiet. And see if you can get your mind to focus on anything for more than 10 seconds. Put yourself to the test and see just what a ping pong ball uh, your attention span really is. It's shocking. And I'll tell you the secret then to getting a longer uh, attention span and getting more out of life. You need something that you can focus on for more than 10 seconds. I would recommend the Word of God. Because what God says is true. What God said exists is. And if God didn't say it, it cannot exist. And if God said it, it cannot be otherwise. And this will solve a lot of issues. It will give you peace of heart and peace of mind. You will worry about your soul because your soul is going to be just fine. The Lord is your shepherd. And you shall not want. And God said, yeah, you'll have hard times. But I promise you, I'll, I'll make the hard times Bring forth something good. Amen? That's what God said. It cannot be otherwise. You're going to go to heaven because God said so. It cannot be otherwise. You bear the image of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are his child. It cannot be otherwise. He does look out for you. He does judge. He does make sure everybody reaps what they sow. He does all these things because he said so. Amen? Amen. So if you want to really bolster your faith in just something simple and elegant, and it's a simple, powerful solution, just latch on to those eight words. If God said it, it cannot be otherwise. Because everything in existence was spoken into existence by the Lord your God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your eternal, unshakable word. Thank you for the written word. Thank you for the word you spoke in Genesis 1. Thank you most of all for the living word, our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the great expression of your heart and of your soul that you've given for us. And Lord, we pray that you'll help us to be students of the word, both the written word and the living word, good followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, when you, you've spoken so many volumes and volumes and volumes in your Bible. Help us, Lord, not to take it for granted, but to read it, to listen to what you say, and to spend the rest of our lives aligning our beliefs with the beliefs of Almighty God and save ourselves the heartache and the stress and the worries and the doubt and all that fear that goes with questioning the Word of God Almighty. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' sweet and precious Almighty, eternal name we pray. Amen.